Hello again. Um, had a lot of fun yesterday making a, a YouTube video. Uh, it turned out the audio quality wasn't perhaps fantastic, so I tweaked it a bit. Um, but I'm I'm a bit of a beginner at this this video production and, and uh, so on. But uh, I mean, I, I think we tend to take being a beginner a bit for granted or maybe like try to hide it a bit because we're self-conscious and uh, we don't want to have other people notice that we don't know everything about the world um or that we aren't like omnicompetent but i think that's a mistake because being a beginner in in almost anything is it's fun right uh, nobody progresses like a beginner like with regular practice you can go from from knowing nothing to being intermediate at almost anything very quickly um that's fun that's rewarding to like watch yourself progress and then it like literally changes how you how you view the world as well um I, i'm a bit of a serial dabbler i've i've um, dabbled in everything from from like weightlifting and, and powerlifting and um, uh, partner dancing and calligraphy and uh, philosophy and history and, and what have you cooking uh, and all all of these all of these skills when you begin to acquire them they, they change how you view the world and, and I mean this in a very literal sense like if, if you're getting into calligraphy you you won't see letters the same the same way anymore and if, if you're getting into to uh, dancing you, you will you will not be able to hear music the same way um, it, it will add like new nuances to these things that you were completely oblivious to before and, and the same goes for I think almost any skill and because I'm my own boss right now I'm, I'm able to just pick up the 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 opportunity to to make these videos uh, and, and record my, myself working uh, and, and that's I mean it's a huge privilege to be able to do this and and uh yeah i'm 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 really enjoying learning this video creation bit um but i'm not learning programming because i've been doing that since i was like seven years old so so the the, the rate of improvement when you're doing and when you've been doing something for 30 years that's fairly slow right but but one way you can improve is to to talk about what you're doing and and uh, explain your process uh, which is something you may get for free when you have co-workers but I'm, I'm a full-time solo developer right now so I don't get that so that's like one of the reasons I wanted to do these videos um yeah so so for today I, I have yet again uh, made a plan um Recently, I've been been adding this this new control service that's intended to to offer a bit of an operator's GUI, um, to to replace a, a lot of of manual work and and shell scripts and so on, uh, to to operate the the search engine, uh, and it's getting there. I mean, the the user interface is incredibly crude still, but. It's getting there, but 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 there's a few there's a few things that can't quite be done just yet, um, and that's the ability to, to to trigger these two services or these two processes, the the crawl job extractor and the website adjacencies calculator. And the crawl job extractor, the the purpose of, of this this little process is to create a crawl job specification file which is basically a compressed json file that contains a list of domains and known urls per domain um, and it can can do this by by looking at the link database or it can do it by by reading a file the website adjacencies calculator which is a very poetic name i think um, it 
I think it's easiest to show. Uh, I, I do have a, a service that exposes the the, the graph it produces. Uh, what it does is try to find similar websites based on which uh, websites are linking to these, these sites. Uh, it, it's a bit complicated to explain, and, and I don't want to go into like the, the, the nitty gritty of this, but uh, if we, for example, choose to, to view the, the similar webs websites to, to the excellent website Game Boomers, which is like an old school uh, walkthrough and, and uh, video game website, and then you will, for example, find the Mystery Manor, which does like adventure games, I think. And uh, you will find uh, yeah, all these websites. Siberia is an adventure game. Uh, Collection Chamber has abandonware games that are, I think, wrapped in like emulators. Um, that's a really cool website if, if you're into retro gaming. Um, and if you're not concerned about running suspicious um, executables from from on, online um and you can see there is there's there's a bunch of these websites that crop up and if you for example go to search or marginate uh, yeah. um my search engine then then the most similar website is Wibby, which is another search engine which has a very similar focus um and it's also great um and they obviously uh, index my 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 stuff as well that's cool um this this uh, graph is actually it's powering part of the search engine uh, which offers stability to for example if you go to a site information sheet like this then you can Click this link that says explore similar domains, and then you will get a list of similar domains. And it's also in, in the random exploration mode if you can go to, I don't know, this this website. Uh, some, some Neo Cities, then you have more Neo Cities because all Neo Cities sites link to each other for some reason. But that's cool. I, I do like my, my Neo Cities. Um, yeah, so, so that's what the website. Uh, adjacency calculator is powering it's basically uh, looping over every known domain and the link graph and then constructing this this graph um and it's actually also powering the the ranking algorithm uh, and the the website uh, adjacencies uh, graph is uh, and and it, it's kind of cool because because normally page rank is very easy to manipulate, right? Um, there there are various methods you can do to 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 mess with it, and and that's why I think few few search engines are actually using page rank anymore. Uh, but it turns out if you use this uh, this adjacencies graph instead then then you actually get a lot better results at least for for the types of content i'm uh, i'm trying to index right uh, and, and we, what we want to do is make it possible to to launch these processes from within the controller uh, the control service uh, and it has the ability to launch processes already that's that's built and it can can launch this these big processes the converter crawler and loader um but in order to do that and, and this is specifically for for the for the in the like local local environment we need to add the root build gradle uh, file um uh, that it's copied into to the local test test place uh and i just need to check what these files are named and um, build this um uh, this is one of them and then we have the other as well we can just Copy paste this beforehand. Uh, crawl job extractor process. Um, 
put it in there. Make sure you can kill this. Uh, this should be fine. Um, and um, as I mentioned, this is only necessary necessary for for running this locally. And and I'm actually off on a branch doing this because uh, there there is some setup problems with with doing this locally. I'm, I'm I've managed to to get it configured by basically manually inserting stuff into the database. But I want like an uh, either a setup guide or some some like defaults that that work out of the box. So if if you download the it repository right now you know, and try to build it from master then none of this exists and, and i've been off from the br this branch for like a month now so i'm sort of eager to merge it back down uh, because it's a humongous change right um so that's done uh, and next we we want to add heartbeats to these processes and then this is to, sorry, I don't want to start Firefox. I want to use this one. Uh, in, in part to have it show up in this list and, and also so that we can track the progress. Um, that's just nice to have. I don't know if it will be tracking the progress of both of them, but at least one of them should be fine. So we go to the, uh, actually I have this open here, Websites Adjacency Calculator, uh, and I want a heartbeat service. Service heartbeat, maybe. No. How do I do this? Um, let's look at the converter main. Uh, heart, process heartbeat is what I want. And it's this is in which a uh, common process right i need to to change some dependencies here uh, process fine um and then we Wait while uh, IntelliJ is refreshing. Is this working now? Right, this should work. And this is taking a process configuration. And the process name. Let's worry about that in a second. Uh, data source. Let's do this. Should be fine. Um, what is supposed to go in in this guy? Actually, just a string. Um, then we can put this is websites adjacencies. So. Website adjacencies. Is this no, it's adjacencies. Uh, fine. Uh, we start it, and then we actually we only want to do this over here in the process. So it's shut down, and then we stick in the process heartbeat in the in the main method. This it's actually possible to run this this process like interactively and, and query it for for relations between websites and so on um right and we need a total which is the size of this one and then we need uh, an atomic integer because we need to be able to track the advancement of this and then we do process heartbeats of progress how is this used is it no actually it doesn't you don't need to, to multiply by 100 you just provide it a double from one to from zero to one uh, so it's 
progress increment and get divided by total. And we do a double conversion as well. I think that should work. Um, this set process is it's just up updating a volatile integer. Um, and then, then there's a thread in, in this process heartbeat that is uh, doing inserts into the database at uh, every every second or something. Uh, so so like this is very cheap and can be done. Well, it, it's not for free, but it's very cheap anyway. Um, and it's complaining about something here. Mm, did I feel the string in the wrong place? Yes, I did. Like so. And actually we can stick the the heartbeat in here because we don't want it if we run it interactively. Okay. Does this have like an auto closable or something? No, it doesn't. And actually it's fine if it doesn't shut down because then, then we're told in, in the GUI that last scene will increment and, and uh, we will be, be informed that, that the process has crashed somehow. Uh, so this should work. I do just want to double check. Actually, process name... Hmm. We'll worry about what should go in here in a moment. Um, I want to do this for for the other process as well. Um, and that is the crawl job extractor. Uh, job. Uh, this guy. And does this guy have the the process common? No. Yeah, it does actually. So it should be heart beatable. Um, does it have a database module? Yes, it does possibly. Mm, I do wonder. I, I, I'm not sure if this one should actually have a heartbeat because it's super fast and uh, I want it to be possible to run it without access to the database. Um, so maybe we don't we don't don't have a heartbeat for this guy. I think it's fine if we skip that. Uh, sorry, I don't want to say this. Um, and then we need to update the process service. Maybe I should like do a build here just to ensure that everything compiles at least. Um, yeah, the process service is responsible for for launching processes in in the control service. Uh, and we do a website agencies calculator and uh, well, job extractor it's still building this is the name yeah, some some of these names are a bit they're a bit lengthy um But that's just how it is sometimes. Um, great. Is this enough? Hmm. Actually, I, I need to be able to trigger the, the crawl job extractor with, with the command line argument, and that's not that's not possible right now. I wonder. Yeah, this this guy needs a command line argument as well, so we need to modify this method to. We can actually do like this. We can create a, a version of the method, uh, like so and and sometimes Copilot can read your mind, and that's kind of cool. Um,
Right. Can we do this? Um. You know, like copy from from. Uh, uh, never mind. Like so, it should work. Why isn't this working? Yeah, it's because it's using args, uh, which is the the currency usually re usually reserved for pirates. It's. One org per five pieces of eight, I think. Um, right, and why are we complaining over here then? I'm not sure. Um, let's rebuild and see if Gradle is discovering what the problem is. Mm, it's not discovering a problem, so... Um, Sure. We should now be able to trigger that. And then we need to create actors, which is the somewhat questionable name I've given the the state machines that are responsible for for running these processes. Um I think we can begin by creating the actor for for the adjacencies calculator that one should be the easier of the two that's in the control service main um it's in here control actor service maybe no uh it's in control actors control actors here we are um We need to add this to the enumeration. So, and then we need to create a class that's so. Let's just copy paste this guy. Like so. Hmm? I'm giving it a new name and yeah, and uh, never mind. Um, we actually want an initial and an end state, and that literally all we need. And we don't need the our third service. We need the process service. Um, we can throw away like all of these guys. Get rid of this guy. Um, this is a bit of an unusual, like it's it's almost like a domain specific language. Um, and the reason it's built like this is to to uh, permit having tasks that that uh, can survive processes and services going offline. Uh, and the the actual system has a fairly complex state that's spread across multiple services and so on. And and, and it's only as, on a single machine, but because it's spread across across multiple services and 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 it's a fairly complicated state, uh, you you either need to manually do everything and and keep in your head the, the state of everything, uh, or you need something like this. Because if you were to like write a script that does this and it fails halfway, half, halfway through, then you're kind of pickled. But 
because uh, you have no way of recovering and, and knowing what the state is. And, and this is stuff that's supposed to be able to run continuously. Uh, and, and if recovery is quick, that's maybe not a big problem. But if, if this goes wrong, then, then the search engine goes offline for anything between a day and like two weeks. So that's not fantastic. Uh, so a, a fairly robust solution is, is necessary to, to uh, maintain the, the state of the system and, and uh, handle recovery and so on. And, and basically what I built is an, an uh, actor agent model backed by a, a very crude message queue. And, and it, it's going through these, these uh, states. I'm not super happy with the name of this annotation, but but um, if we look in the system we have, for example, actually, no, no, it's offline. Uh, let's boot it up. Uh, the, the biggest uh, state graph is this reconvert load, uh, which is going through a whole bunch of states. It, it has an initial state that doesn't really do anything. It does some validation, then it goes to a reconvert state which sends a message to the, the converter, uh, which actually gets picked up by another actor, which spawns the converter. While this, this state, uh, state machine goes and, and waits for a response, and it's just basically waiting here. Um, and then it transitions to load, where it sends another message to the, the loader process, which uh, another state machine will, will listen and spawn. And then it's waiting, and then it's telling the the index that it needs to exchange its um, its lexicon uh, b because it's it's changed now, and and uh, the the old values aren't valid anymore. And then it tells the index to repetition, and then it waits for the repetitioning, uh, and then it tells it to re-index, and it waits for the re-indexing, and so on. And and obviously this is I was doing this manually before. And it's like a week's work, and you need to constantly babysit this. But but being able to automate it like this, and, and obviously, I mean, this is a crude and fairly advanced interface. I, I don't expect like regular users to, to sit and, and watch this and interact with this. But I mean, it's a complicated system, so it's got a complicated user interface. Um, and, and it's fairly transparent about stuff like the fact that there is a message queue and, and you're expected to, to basically understand how it works and, and the states and, and you can even expect, inspect the messages that, that are passed through just JSON, right? Um, so what we're doing is, is adding another one of these actors. Uh, and it, this is the guy, and, and it's super simple. We're just going to have one state. Uh, but, but most of these system actions are going to be triggered through these, these actors because it's a, a very robust way of doing it. And it, you also have the benefit of being able to audit what's actually happened. You can, can look at the, the uh, um, converter monitor and, and see Oh, it's been running and it's starting and stopping and starting and stopping a couple of times, but it was running yesterday, for example. Um, yeah, so what we're doing is adding a new actor. We're actually going to add two new actors, but we're, we're beginning with, with the JSON C calculator uh, launcher. So what we do is the process service trigger and then we process id uh json is calculator and it wants the it wants the string load uh, and it's fine to just throw an exception do wonder yeah this will actually block until it's finished so that's fine another neat part about this Actually, no, that, that doesn't work. Um, a neat part about this is that you can, if you build them properly, you can abort these these uh, these states. But what we want to do is, uh, we want to have an 
uh, a single executor. We can actually have this guy over here. I do this now. Like this. Um, and then we submit this guy here. And then we write catch. And we actually need an atomic boolean has error in new attempt new false. Set true. Actually, it's just an exception that is filling. So let's do that. Something like that. And then we actually sit, yeah. Um, let's just create a future and then we, we get it because then this is interruptible and it will, I think, abort the process if it's interrupted i think at least i'm i'm doing this over here somewhere um and i know for certain this works so yeah this this exact flow so that's fine uh and then we can just do if error has error get a transition actually can i do it oh, yeah um like so, it should actually work, I think. The make this a final, and then we need a there's some error like the the control process has crashed, and we just set this to be an error, and then we need to manually restart it. There's the option of, of having it automatically resume um this isn't desirable right now so so let's ignore that fact and then we need a description as well um, like so i think that should work um unless i'm missing something we should just be able to to need to run distant docker as well um we should actually be able to to run this now i think possibly Sure, doing something. Um, and it's not showing up in the heartbeats. That's interesting. Process base. It's causing errors in in the unknown process space. Hmm. It's fascinating. Um, it's causing errors in the rendering for some reason. Probably forgetting something. Right. We needed to do this as well. Interesting. Um, 
I'm not sure why it's logging these like blank lines. So maybe there's there's something. It's possible I had like a spinner or something that that's supposed to print while you're running this. Maybe. Uh, so we need to figure out. Unknown process base still it just not rebuild properly. Ah. Sneaky S. Let's see. The, the one of the problems with doing this type of work is that because it involves spawning processes and so on, um, it's kind of tricky to isolate and, and uh, unit test. Okay, so it's not logging, a, yeah, it's still logging a bunch of blank lines. Interesting. Um, Yeah, so so it's fairly fairly difficult to to like isolate the unit test. Um, so you're stuck doing this like manual debugging, um, which is very time consuming. Oh yes, this progress printer. I need to get rid of that. Um, I think I think it was like a spinner or like a series of dots that's that moved across the screen or something but we don't want this to be to be happening um it interacts very poorly with, with how how the logging is set up for these child processes it's basically logging them onto the console and prefixed with some string i think Right, and this one went to error for some reason. It's running and we get updates. That's neat. Maybe I should rename this this tag. It's a bit too long and it's messing up the GUI. Neat. Um, and it runs, so that that's cool. Um, I think that's at the work or something like that. Um, what we have left is the the uh, the other guy, the crawl job extractor, and it's also going to be an actor but it's going to be a bit complicated because it's going to have two initial states uh, one for loading from a URL and one from for loading from the database I think we can begin by building the load from database thing uh, and just copy paste this because, because it's going to be very similar um, yeah Very similar indeed, and we can actually just the initial. Actually, we do need to provide something as a parameter here um, because it needs an output uh, a directory where it's supposed to to 
to uh, write the, the crawl job specification. So we need a message. Mm. Can we just do a record or something? Uh, record. Like so, maybe. Um, no, that should be working. Um, and, and then we also possibly. Yeah, we'll, we'll worry about the, the other arguments later. Um, We can. It's it's often easier to just build something and then refactor it and, and extend it than than to like visualize some some complete solution beforehand and then because it's it's still it's not going to be perfect anyway. Uh, so just building something and and then uh, working on it is is usually what you want to do. Uh, I'm just gonna look at the the interface I had in mind for this. Uh, and it's super crude still. Um, actually, I don't think I want to provide an argument like this. What I do want is to have the, the file storage service. Uh, basically allocate one for me. Uh, and then I need more states. Uh, or do I? I mean, the the, the super robust way would be, be to have like a state for for allocating the the file storage area, and then jump over to a state that's actually running the process so that it's recoverable. But I also think like this is a very quick job, and if it messes up, then you just delete the specification and create a new one. Um, and and because this this graph is so small, I can actually do it in 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 the same in the same state. So it's just initial. Uh, and then we can we'll we'll keep this record because we're going to need it later. But but uh, for the basic case. Um, we don't actually need a parameter. What we do need to do is to file storage service create, allocate temporary storage F, and then we actually need a base as well. Get base by type slow. I set this up so so it's it's supposed to be configurable. So if if you have, for example, uh, an SSD for for the the index data and and like some some spinning metal for for the crawl data or so on, uh, you can instruct it. I want I want a directory on on the slow hard drive for this, and it will will um, basically set it up for you. Um, with the cross specification and then we do uh, yeah actually we, we do need a description here it's super important um so. and then we get the path Which is basically where we, where we want to, to write this cron job extractor. And the first argument is path string, right? And then we need to fix the copy paste artifacts as well.
R R R R I I eight. Um. Actually need to insert this uh, method in the no, it's not a process service, it's control actors. So that it, it learns about it and, and you can trigger it. like so uh, and then we need a way to actually run this as well because the, the, the init method for this one has an argument and if you try to trigger it from from the from the interface like this uh, then it doesn't work and this one should have one as well i think yeah so let's try and trigger it and see what happens yeah, you get an error and it will say that this actor requires a file storage ID. Um, and actually, I, sh I should do the same thing in here. Um, to, to get some sort of a feed feedback when it goes wrong, otherwise you're just going to get a null pointer exception. That's not very user friendly. Right, um, and I think I did have something in mind when I was building this like very basic user interface. Um, yeah, I did make some sort of a form. Uh, it's storage specs. Um, Let's go into the control service and make something for that. So, uh, 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 and this should just, what are we doing here? I was re returning an empty string, so that's fine. Um, we will redirect later, so this is, should just be doing something. Let's see if I can remember how we get form data out of this. Uh, Um, it's not every day I actually do this. So it's like params. Let's just let's just log this. Actually, yeah, let, let, let's, just, let's just log it and, and see what happens. Um, something like that let's see um i, I know i'm doing this in, in some place i think if it hasn't been deleted from the system i'm, I'm like super trying to to minimize the amount of, of user input because that's uh, always a liability uh any any time you have uh, comments or anything like that uh, you're, you're going to get spammed u-w-e-r-t-y our, our old friend uh, okay um let's go to the search service and, and see how it's done over there 
think it has something like um is it site info complaint insert complaint uh, Is it query params? Or is this a get? No, it's query params. Really? Um, sure. Let's try this then. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm always forgetting how to do this. I'm, I'm, I'm not using this part of the, of the interface often enough uh, to, to have this fresh. But the nice thing of, of having a relatively large system is that you can always just uh, check how you did it someplace else. Uh, specifications, like so. Description source URL, right. Um, and what I want is the description. And that should be enough, actually. Uh, no, actually, I, I, I'm, I'm not sure if I want this to be in the file storage service at all, because this isn't actually to do with file storage. Uh, file, file storage. This is to do with the uh, control actor service. Um, which is responsible for, for triggering these actors. Um, crawl the extractor in it, and then we need a something like that and it's going to throw an exception and that's something i don't really care about right now um right let's try this then and don't think I worry too much about the, the error handling for, for these, these uh, body parameters because this is supposed to be an internal user interface. So, uh, presumably, if something goes wrong, I'm the one who made it go wrong. So, um, I think that's fine. Uh, specifications. Hello, world. And did something happen? Actors. Um, yeah, did something? Did it run the the script? The oh yeah, yeah. We we actually provided it the directory name, and we need to add a. Uh, we need to add a file name as well. Um, so we do uh, resolve uh, crawl spec. I think that's the official name, isn't it? No. Um, let's look at the. Yeah, this guy shouldn't be in the monitoring, it should be in the task package. Um, it's looking for a file. Why am I doing this? I should be providing a file somewhere in here. 
prone storage get storage uh, checking the type uh, in the description relating them and what am I doing here Crawl. press Actually, is it the crawler that's looking up the name? Uh, crawler.spec. It shouldn't be crawl.spec. Like so. And maybe this should be a constant somewhere. Um, it used to be like super configurable. I had a YAML file where, where you could specify like each of these file names uh, for every time you're running the crawler or or whatever. Um, but I'm, I'm moving toward having like a con convention for these file names instead because it's making the the uh, uh, it's making the system needlessly complicated. To, permit having like a crawl.spec in one in one directory and then you have like a blog.spec in another and then you have a crawler.spec in a third and, and, and so on. Um, so I want to get away from that if I can. Uh, does this work now? Specifications. Hello world 2. Use links from the database and it's doing stuff. That's good. Should be relatively quick, I think. If I don't have a bunch of gunk in the in the local deployment database, that's entirely possible. Um, yes, and I should should probably rename this from initial because that's usually meaning like the the first step that doesn't do anything. It should be a run or something. Or maybe I should have a have a name that's specific to what what it's doing, which is to, to create one of these jobs from uh, from uh, from the link database. And it's actually taking a good moment. I Maybe I have a lot of stuff in the database that's entirely possible. Um, either that or it's crashed. Okay, so it's written to disk. Uh, that's cool. That's cool indeed. And I'm not going to try to crawl this data uh, because I don't want to like test their webmasters with, with like needless crawling. And that that's a great way of getting your your um, crawler banned actually. Um, so I'm not going to do that. What I am is going to pause for a brief minute. I need to fix something. I'm, I'm back. Uh, it's so freaking hot and humid here. Um, and I just needed to get some air. Right. What, what we have left is to uh, uh, trigger the other mode of, of uh, crawlers, uh, crawl specification, uh, which is to pull from a link of uh, a, a list of, of uh, domains, which is. The idea is to to basically have have these uploaded. I, I do have a few a few lists. I have a, a list of blogs here, for for example. Um, so I want to be able to like let's go to the the raw view, and, and then we just pull this, and then we feed it to the crawl job extractor, and that's fairly straightforward again. Um, but we can't do it from the same state. Um, 
We're actually, I think we're gonna to, going to make a few new states here, and, and these are actually going to be initial states. We're going to have an initial state that's sort of the default initial state, and that's not going to do anything. It's just going to tr transition to error uh, because we don't want to run that one, and we have have a state that's create from db, and then we have a, a create from link. And this should actually match. Um, it's sort of awkward to, to have to jump to these by string. Uh, but it is what it is. Uh, it's necessary to do this to, to be able to essentially persist the state uh, over time and over, over instances. Um, Actually, we, we copy this one and then we we change it. Uh, create from DV. Um, and then we have another guy. These are going to be very similar, but not identical. Um, that's a bit annoying, but that's fine. Um, And then we need the, the initial state as well. Uh, just for, for formal reasons. Create from link crimped from db um and i think we're actually going to download the link to the file storage uh, and we do not want this piece open stream and then we do uh, do like that and then we do like that and if we get an accept um actually we want to open this in uh, private resources as well Um, read all the bytes from the stream. May block indefinitely. I'm not sure if that's a problem. I, I don't think that's a problem. Uh, it will be, it's interruptible, right? Uh, Right, so it's not specified what happens if, if we're interrupted. Um, but maybe that's fine. Uh, I think there's a transfer method in here somewhere as well.
isn't there? Ah, never mind. This should work. Uh, and then we have this guy will have more arguments. It will have like dash f and then like so. I think that should work. And then we need to look at the control actor service, I think. Right. Um, where did we trigger this from? No, that that's from from the from the. This is where I wanted to go. And we actually need to we need to look at the parameters a bit. Um, what are we sending in here? There's a parameter called the URL. Uh, I wonder if we can just do like this. Can we do that like this? Actually, we need to do. Uh, It's blank, we do this, else we do the other. Um, um, I don't think this is sufficient to do this. We, we need to check if we're actually sending in a radio button for this as well. Um, that, that's telling us which source to look for, but, but for now we'll, we'll do this so we can test it. Uh, and then we need to actually we we don't want to pass in strings. We want to pass in aren't these guys publicly visible? I think they should be publicly visible. It makes it a lot easier. Um, makes it neat and clean. Create from link. Great. Uh, let's just log out these query parameters. I'm not 100% sure how this radio button will be passed in, so... Let's just log it out so we can look at it while we're, while we're testing this. Um, Yes. This is turning out to be a relatively big change. Uh, and in part because we're, we're doing two things at the same time. We're, we're plumbing both for, for the, the uh, adjacency calculator and for, for uh, this crawl job specification thing. Uh, Actually, we, we need to clean this file as well, I think. Actually, is this crawl job specification thing maybe doing this for us? Uh, let's let's find out. Let's let's just try. Um, test URLs. Um, then we send in this GitHub thing. Create from link is done. Specifications, test URLs. Let's go over here. Yeah, it's actually looking fine. That's cool. No?
Great, so that's working as intended. That's quite neat. Um, we're able to trigger it by by sending in links, and then we go to specifications, and then we uh, from DB use link from the database, and then we submit, and then we can check the logs because we should be able to see source right. Um, um uh, what are we passing in here? It's X, it's DB, and it's download. So, Copilot is lying to us. Sneaky, sneaky Copilot. Um, sure. And we actually need to test this again. But we can kill this. We can test the the or functionality as well, it seems to have worked. We actually do. We'll, we'll, we'll give them a, a 500 if they're passing something else, that's fine. We can remove this logging. Um. Is there anything we can do from the actor? I think. Getting a nice and, and neater message from doing this is great. Um, and we can actually do uh, file store charge. How, how do I do this? There's a, there's a method for flagging this, this uh, storage to be deleted. I think it's this guy. Um, now it's just deleting it from the database. We really have no, no, uh, no way of setting this urge flag. Uh, it's, it will tell the, it will tell the, uh, Right, maybe I need to pull this, pull in this guy as well. Um, it, it will tell the system that it should uh, delete and and unreference this this file storage and because it's not needed anymore. But maybe we should pull in this guy as well. Uh, or maybe this should be in in the file storage service. I don't know. Uh, Right, we'll flag it for deletion and do an update, that's fine. And maybe we should do the same thing over here as well. Um, actually, we can, we can do it in here. And that way, if we're messing this up, uh, why are we getting a red red dot over here? Identifier type specific. Oh, how do you say? There's a comma. Um, this is the same. Hmm. 
maybe I can actually extract some some shared logic in here. Um, Just call it run for now. And then we will paste in this part. Uh, and it will throw some exception and we will also And we can't do this because we need to do this. Uh, great. Now, now we can run storage and then paste in this thing we removed. And we can do the exact same thing over here. Uh, the difference is we need to paste in this part instead. Uh, 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 like so, no, like so, and then we don't need to duplicate this logic. I'm not like super anti code duplication. I know so some people are like, "Whoa, this is being used in two locations. It's terrible." Um, but actually, uh, be, being too hard on on code code reuse often tends to complicate your code quite a bit um great so now now we have we have dealt with the error handling a bit so, so that uh, if something goes wrong then then we aren't like littering the system with, with directories that that has broken data i think that's a bit more civilized than, than just leaving it be um And we have cleaned up the code quite a bit. And uh, what have we done more? Yeah, we have some error handling as well. Let's try. Let's pull from, from actually this one. Uh, Yeah, so we're immediately getting an error. Um, error, and it says error downloading this guy. Cool. Um, I wonder what happens if you like feed it nonsense. Yeah, let's let's try to feed it, uh, feed it, feed it out maybe. Uh, this one wasn't actually purged though. Why wasn't it purged? This is liveless monitor should be running. The file storage monitor. It's not doing anything. Hmm. So we're we're transitioning to error state in crawl job extractor. Uh, error downloading. Oh right, we we this this error thing it will secretly th throw an exception. Uh, so whatever you put below it doesn't get run. It's a bit dangerous. Um, so it should always be in the last line. Just rebuild and try it again. Yeah, the, this like. DSL for, for state machines, it's like most DSLs, it's a bit finicky. Um, and in general, I, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of, of DSLs and, and, and the main specific languages. Um, but in this case, I think it's the lesser evil. Um, really is, is enabling some pretty cool stuff. So let's try this again. Download and we download and then and then we go to the actors and it will have errored and 
got purged. Excellent. So that seems to be working. Let's try the the create the the, the ink guy again uh, from DB. Use link database, and then we wait. I do. I kind of want to have one of these like process things. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a bit on the fence about this. Um, being able to see whether something is running is, is very nice and convenient. At the same time, I don't... Uh, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of having this particular uh, process require database access because I think it's sometimes useful to be able to just run it uh, as it is. So maybe that will go in the backlog as something that should be fixed. I don't know. Let's let's add a to do. I'm I'm not a huge to do guy, but uh, uh, let's use this guy instead. Crawl job extractor. Let's add a to do comment. To to do. Uh, Figure out how whether it needs a process and actually I want a date for this as well. It, it's very very civilized to to put a date on your to dos because even though you can like get blame and so on, it, it makes it so much easier to see like oh this this to do uh, has been around since. 2008 and, and nobody has fixed it well maybe then it should just just be deleted but it, if it's more recent then it's more credible um you can actually like i, I remember i used to this was back when i was using eclipse i, I had a, a filter for for uh, to do with, with my username on it so i I don't, I don't know exactly exactly the format I was using, but it was something like uh, uh, something like this. Um, so then I can see my own to dos all the time, uh, and it was actually a very useful tool, and obviously it's helpful for other people as well if if they see uh, code with with my name on it, whereas there's like a fix me. Should we really be doing this? Well, they can ask me about it, uh, and it's very much more visible than, than having to do like, like this skip blame stuff. Uh, yeah. So far about to do's. And let's see, is there anything else we want to do? Uh, we've created the actors and we hooked into the crawl job extractor. And we have drawn the owl. Yeah, that's cool. I think that's actually all I wanted to do today. It became a bit of a longer episode than last time, but that's maybe fine. Let's let's go over the ifs just in case. Uh, what are these IDs? I'm just pulling a, a list of IDs for zero reason, right? IDs. Is ever used uh, this this particular process or this this particular uh, uh, class is fairly messy. It was just an experiment I was doing that turned out to be so successful. So, so successful, I, I wanted to keep it. But what it's doing is is fairly finicky. Uh, it, it's doing uh, cosine similarity calculations using a, a custom uh, sparse bit set class. I was originally using uh, roaring bitmaps, but it's this turns out to be even faster. It's like super optimized for this exact operation I'm doing. Um, but the actual code is fairly gnarly, so so uh, it will stay the way it is for now. Um, right. And we edited some Gradle files and we made some actors. Yes, this is one thing I want to 
change. I want to have it be like uh, I want to have it be like adjacency calculation instead. Um, does this show up anywhere else? Yes, it is showing up somewhere else. We we should rename this guy because uh, these like super long names they, even though it's not quite matching this um, name of the binary it's it's messing up the user interface so so like being able to remove at least this part will make it better um whilst by, while still being relatively easy to follow um right um, nothing in here that's particularly fancy. Um, this is doing what I want it to do. Um, redirect the services. Is that not used anymore? I will actually keep that guy around because I probably need it. Uh, even though, you know, you're not going to need it this time. I'm actually going to need it. I just haven't gotten around to, to building that part of the, the GUI yet, so nothing is redirecting. And this is the new actor. Um, do I need... Yeah, actually, I, I should update this descript description. Um, this is like the, the inline documentation. Um, so I think it's worth putting in some effort into getting it right. Um, not just for my own sake, but if, if anyone else want to eventually be operating this system, having the, the documentation relatively tightly coupled to the code is very helpful, um, in my opinion anyway, on this trigger thing. Should this be the initial state? Yeah, that's fine. We, we, it shouldn't. Yeah. I, I, I think I need to, to work on the user interface for that, but for now that's that's super fine. And we cleaned this guy up a bit. We looked at this guy. Yeah, we added a to-do and did like literally nothing else. Cool. Yeah, my, my git messages are always a bit too long, but I have, I don't know, I think you're just going to have to deal with that. I don't think these changes can be isolated in a meaningful way, uh, but without like causing much more work. So, so uh, we will do both of these at the same time um, before we commit let's just let's just build run some tests that's just good due diligence this is still off on a branch so i mean if it blows up that's my headache for later but uh i don't want to be be like spreading bad habits um yeah Another episode down, and I'm sure literally all four of you are, are loving it. Um, 
I'm really enjoying doing this stuff, so, so I'm going to keep do it, doing it. And, and hopefully, as time passes, it will, will improve in, in quality and, and uh, in, in, in maybe audience as well. Um, but the fact that it's really fun and, and rewarding and, and actually helpful to me, uh, I mean, uh, as I mentioned, I, I literally don't have co-workers right now. I'm, I'm doing solo development and, and missing being able to or having to explain stuff every now and again. It, it's really important to 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 your development. So, um, but yeah, let's just go ahead and push this. Yes, the tests are green and and everything, and there's a bunch of warnings, but it's not actually anything that's related to to what I've, I'm doing now um, like boilerplate stuff um, but yeah I, I hope this was at least a little bit interesting or enjoyable or whatever and if not there are many other channels so uh, you don't have to sit through this um, but yeah See ya.